the distinct honour to announce to you from Great Britain that in support of the 2020 United Nations World Day for Cultural Diversity, for Dialogue and Development, proclaimed by His Excellency the Secretary General for the 21st of May, there will be a special commemorative ceremony. His Highness Prince Rostislav Romanov, a direct lineal descendant of Emperor Alexander III of Russia, together with His Excellency Special Envoy Bond, the direct lineal descendant of King Charles II of Great Britain, who were both jointly co-curate a unique programme of events by appointment of the organisation FOPAL. I hereby salute you. God save the Queen! As COVID-19 has quickly spread around the world, it serves as a reminder of how interconnected we all are. So, while we may not be able to physically travel the world and experience other cultures, at this moment, we are able to travel virtually through the internet in recognition of World Day of Cultural Diversity. For dialogue and development, we have assembled a mosaic of cultures through the support of friends that we have met during our travels through around the world. We start this program with a video highlighting the Federation of World Peace and Love's own journey around the world. The Federation of World Peace and Love, FOPAL, established by Dr. Hong Daozi in 2000, is a U.S.-based peace organization. It promotes love and peace through various means. World Leader Summits of Love and Peace Providing a platform for an exchange of ideas and experiences. Peace is very, very great. We need peace in our heart, in our neighbor, in our home in every country in the world. Dialogues with global leaders. Sharing wisdom for the betterment of the world. Cultural exchanges. Bringing people closer together through culture. We must learn how to live in peace and examples of the kind before you today, pointers in the direction in which we should travel. Endorsement campaigns, promoting ideas of conscience, love, peace, and human rights. Bell ringing ceremonies, visionary leaders ringing the bell and making wishes for peace. A sound. A very simple golden round shape there like this can change the world if our heart goes with that sound. The sound of world peace and love. Energy! Dr. Hong has led FOPAL members to visit 101 nations to unite peace promoters in different parts of the world. With more people's conscience awakened, we will generate powerful positive energy and create a world of love, peace, and conscience.
on April 5th, Bhopal celebrated the very first United Nations International Day of Conscience. It, it was our experience that conscience is a common to all cultures. This understanding guides us to appreciate cultural diversity and greet differences with compassion and tolerance, which in turn puts us on a path toward world peace. These principles and many more valuable lessons are better expressed by Dr. Hong Daoze, the president of Fopal, who was admirably referenced as the modern day Confucius by Ambassador Taburu Tito of Kiribati. Now we would like to share the principles of Dr. Hong through his video. Go 快速的传递正向信息展示让人心变得不安让社会变得混乱而文化差异更使得人与人之间的关系变得疏远我们应相互尊重与包容才能让不同的文化共存共荣创造更多彩且和谐的世界多元文化的价值在于尊重与包容不同文化融合不同文化进而激荡出更璀璨的火花使我们的生活、职场、社会和世界不断创新卓越然而让我们看见多元文化之美的就是良心它让我们知道爱与和平能取代冲突与冷漠如同我们的家乡都有由子先所流传下来危及人类的身体健康
，世界各地的人们呢，发起了各种良善运动，透过各种方式为彼此打气加油，如同黑暗中的明灯，良心是唯一的解药。唤醒每个人的良心，在此刻至关重要。团结所有人的良心，必定能产生强大的力量，让全人类度过危机，让世界幸福祥和，让地球重新回到平衡的状态。各位朋友们，让我们从自己做起。唤醒自己的良心，也帮助他人觉醒。一颗颗明亮的良心，会为世界连接成一座安全网。每个人都是良心领袖，以良心行事，保护自己，也护卫世界。请听自己内在良心的声音，让。因外在环境而窘迫不安的心安定下来，并诚心祈愿世界安平、世人安康，用爱与良心促进和平文化，提升多元文化的价值，促进世界蓬勃发展，打造幸福、祥和的崭新世界。世界之爱和平总会。会长洪道子于二零二零年五月二十一日。As we celebrate cultural diversity in these times of COVID-19, I cannot think of anyone who embodies this more than Flight Lieutenant Harriet Tadikanda of the British Royal Air Force. Prior to contracting COVID-19 in March of this year, the illness that has shaken the globe, from which she has thankfully recovering, she led an interfaith musical that gathered representatives. From the major religions to celebrate their commonalities and mutual aspirations for peace. This recording is for the World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. I, like so many, am suffering from the side effects of Corona. As the world stands still, and we learn to breathe again, we will rise again, and we will rise more united and stronger. <laughs> And so we are actually very privileged because today Flight Lieutenant Harriet Tatanka Tokanda is with us live, and I wanted to ask her to introduce briefly the path to peace and the ideas behind behind that in making that a reality. Hi. Good afternoon. Yes, I can hear. You. Okay. Wonderful. So, would you mind introducing the next video, which is the, the for the path to peace? Yeah, of course. Uh, firstly, this is a really poignant time for me, obviously, having、um, been hospitalised recently with Corona.、Um, but through this, I've seen some amazing signs of humanity. I've seen 
real compassion where people instinctively sacrifice almost everything to help others. Um, and I've seen people choose a more simple way of living. Um, some might say a better way of living. So even though it's been a difficult time, in some ways it's been a wonderful time um, for families to turn inward. Um, and that's really what One Voice was all about. It's about the children, it's about the families, it's about looking to build a better future together, uh, where children find friendships that then carry on into adulthood, and then we have a more stable society. Uh, so One Voice is a lot of the work you're doing, um, and we are really privileged and honoured to have been uh, involved in, in this wonderful day today, so thank you. Let me take you on a journey to a place where lovers flee. Many paths lead through the wilderness, while beings won't keep you from me. There's a It's such a beautiful composition, Harriet. I really applaud your efforts in putting that together. So today is a very special day. We have us with us the co-curator, as co-curators, the His Highness Prince Rostilov Rostilovich Romanov from Russia. The prince being the great great grandson of His Majesty Imperial Majesty Emperor Alexander the Third. Romanov of Russia, and the great great nephew of the ill fated His Imperial Majesty Emperor Nicholas II, as well as an uh, artist who is joining us from his studio in Britain. Good afternoon. My name is Rostislav Romanov. 
I want to thank you very much for inviting me here today to talk about diversity of culture, art and peace. First off, I want to show my appreciation and gratitude to during this pandemic to the people who are working the front line tirelessly, the doctors, the nurses, the food industry, and of course the school and the teachers teaching our kids during this time of need. Without school, we will not know history and history has played an important role in my life. On my father's side, I'm related to the last emperor of Russia, Nicholas II. He's my great, great uncle. And of course the Romanovs were great patrons of arts in their time. They built palaces, Sarske Solon, with 120 water fountains that has no mechanics or electricity. To Catherine's the Great Palace with the beautiful Amber Room, which has been lovingly restored after being lost during World War II. To the Hermitage, the magnificent, beautiful Hermitage. So vast, it's, it's a wonder. The peacock clock in the Hermitage that chimes once a day to the Rembrandts they have on show, to the Da Vinci's, the Michelangelo's. And of course, my personal favorite are the Russian landscape painters from the Silver Age era. I go there every time to inspire me. Like they inspired me when I was a kid when they were on show in, in London. But also on my mother's side, my great grandmother went to art school with Edvard Munch and Edvard Munch fell in love with my great grandmother. But she was betrothed to someone else and she married my great grandfather who was a lawyer. But that didn't stop Edvard Munch from painting them. And it's a great honour and it makes me really happy when these paintings come to England and I get to go and see them. Seeing my family again from a different generation era is very special. But there are rumours saying that when Edvard Munch painted the, la the screen, the two figures on the bridge in the background might represent my great grandmother and my great grandfather, which is very, very peculiar. But with that in my DNA, I went off into this world. When I was young, I lost my father and it was very saddening when I was a child, but I did not know back then it was a catalyst to who I am today. As I was doing art at school, an art teacher turned around to me and said, why don't you paint what you feel? And that's when I started taking art seriously. And then a year later, my mentor came in, John Hinchcliffe, who took me underneath his wing and taught me everything he knew about art and told and gave me the belief and strength to go off to art school to become an artist. Without the Hinchke family, I would not be here. And I'm very blessed that my life has taken this path because what I understand about art is very peculiar because during great conflicts, that's when the greatest art piece come because we need that beauty and that peace because art reminds us of that peace. Art gives us that voice that we need to speak, that where words fail, images, shapes, dances, patterns, textiles will prevail. And for that, I am truly grateful and always keeping my eyes and ears and smells and feelings and soul open to new experiences. So I look forward to today talking to you and discussing to you about this and learning as well. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. It is also our great privilege to introduce the, the His Highness's co-curator, uh, his special envoy, Philip Bond. King Charles I, my 11th generational grandfather, was one of many descents that I have from the royal family. My great, great, great grandfather was Prime Minister of Canada. His name was Sir Alan Napier MacNab. He built 
Dundurn Castle on Lake Ontario, and technically was the Premier of Upper Canada, or the Province of Canada. He was Premier from 1852 to 1854, and his wife was a Stuart, Sophia Stuart. So through this line as well, more immediately, I descend from the Stuarts. My father's great aunt was the Honourable Alice Keppel, mistress of His Majesty King Edward VII, Emperor of India. As a result, this was a relationship which has had many consequences in future times. Interestingly, the Honourable Alice Keppel resided in the city of Florence, which her ancestors and those of her husband had ruled the Medici many centuries before. King Charles I married Princess Henrietta Maria de Bourbon, daughter of King Henry IV of France, King of Navarre. The consort of King Henry IV of Navarre was the Princess Marie de Medici, who was the daughter of Francesco II, Grand Duke of Florence. It is thus that the blood of the illustrious House of Medici comes into the Royal House of France, and thus into the Royal House of England, and thus to me. The Medici, without doubt, were the greatest flower of patrons of art that the Western world has ever produced. Through the collection, which still remains in Florence, in the Uffizi and Pitti Palace, because of the will of the last princess and ruler of Florence, the contents of the palaces was never sacked and removed to other European countries, as so often happened. The Medici legacy was great. In France, there were two queens who bore that blood. The first, I have said, was Marie de Medici, but there was also Catherine de Medici. She was a woman, a great patron of the arts, though not liked much in, in France. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to present my dear friend from Hawaii, Her Royal Highness Princess Awana. What a great legacy she has given to this world, a musician, an artist, a leader of her people. Thus I present Princess Awana. Ano ai me ki aloha pumehana ya o koa pau. At the invitation of my friend, Special Envoy Bon, I am delighted to support the United Nations World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development being celebrated today, the 21st of May, 2020. It is appropriate to host a uniquely Hawaiian toast, a salute celebrating the United Nations World Day of Culture and Diversity. After all, the vision of a greater Pacific, in fact, a world peace, a world free of slavery, free of gender, race, and social inequality originates in Oceania. It originated in the vision of our great leaders like His Majesty King Kamehameha III and His Majesty King David Kalakaua, who is famously celebrated every year with the Merry Monarch Hula Festival in Hilo, Hawaii Island. I am myself presently on Moku Okiave, Hawaii Island, also known as the Big Island, on the Hamakua coast, on the slopes of our beloved Mauna Kea. This is where the intersection of culture and community is playing out against the backdrop of science and commerce. Case in point are the four bullet points conveniently provided for me on your website. I'd like to make bullet point number four my starting point. First and foremost, we should always promote human rights and fundamental freedoms great starting point and probably a great end point too 
But I worry that sometimes large organizations and institutions use the language of culture and diversity to actually cover up the inadequacies of the global corporate elite. For example, let's examine the meaning of the other three bullet points, minus the word culture. Support sustainable systems of governance. Achieve a balanced flow of goods and services and increase mobility of artists and professionals. Integrate sustainable development and frameworks. Now, Hawaii, along with the world, is experiencing this COVID-19 pandemic. We know the ravages of diseases. We know the injustices of socioeconomic development. We know the resilience of our ancestors. We know we will survive. But how will we survive? In 1844, His Majesty King Kamehameha III proclaimed the Hawaiian monarchy to be vested under the Kamehameha dynasty. Through the Order in Council, the continuity of Hawaii's throne was secured and the right of succession publicly proclaimed in the Polynesian, a newspaper heralded as the official government journal. Through that royal act, the Hawaiian monarchy remains intact, regardless of the machinations and political treachery of the American privateers and the U.S. war machine. In 1914, Queen Ili Uokalani held a historic public ceremony that both commemorated the centennial of the birth of King Kamehameha III and publicly recognized the next-in-line royal heir, Princess Elizabeth Kekaaniao Laanui. The line of royal succession continued with her niece daughter, Princess Teresa Owana Kaohelilani Laanui, then to her son, Prince Robert Kiowa Wilcox, whose daughter was Princess Helena Kaloko Kamaili Wilcox, my mother. I know for certain that life, business, governance, in fact our communities, our families, will never be the same, and likewise cannot go on as usual. With our hearts and minds in positive forward motion, we see this as our opportunity to reset, not to recover, not reposition. We need to get it right this first time. It is now. We must bring ourselves into a true and honest regenerative relationship with our Mother Earth, to each other, and to ourselves. It gives me a pleasure to introduce His Excellency, the former President of Trinidad and Tobago. I am Justice Anthony Thomas Aquinas Carmona, the fifth and former President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and with me is my wife, Mrs. Rima Carmona, the former First Lady. World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development allows for pertinent dialogue where many of us can understand how the various manifestations of cultural diversity propagate and proliferate peace, mutual understanding, and the development of social, environmental, and economic paths for sustainable development. The United Nations General Assembly declared this World Day in 2002, and I quote, to enhance the potential of culture as a means of achieving prosperity, sustainable development, and global peaceful coexistence. Three quarters of major global, global conflicts have an underlying cultural and ethnic connection. And we must therefore encourage understanding and tolerance between and amongst nations and societies of the world. This day, all, this day also supports the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, part of the 2030 Global Agenda, particularly goal number 10, reducing inequalities, goal number 13, climate action, and goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. FOPAL must be commended for this initiative. My wife and I appreciate the invitation from FOPAL to be part of this international virtual conference. 
We come from our beautiful Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, a nation described by Pope John Paul II and Archbishop Desmond Tutu as the rainbow nation of the world. By virtue of its cosmopolitan com composition, the result of colonization, slavery, indentureship, and migration. With our mix of cultures, there is unity in our diversity. In my country, churches, temples, and mosques operate in close proximity to each other, all conducting their prayer rituals in peace and harmony. I am proud to be from a diverse people who celebrate each other's religious festivals, visiting each other's homes for Diwali, Eid of the Fatur, and Christmas to partake in the cultural and religious traditions. We must remain vigilant so that our cultural diversity is not used as a weapon onto us, as a weapon of division and marginalization. Historically, cultural diversity has been the foundation stone of strife in our societies, and as a misplaced and skewed mechanism to divide and rule by persons of influence, leaders, and political parties, individually and collectively. No one is better than another, and everyone without exception brings value to the table of humanity. Trinidad and Tobago is a potpourri of cultures, an eclectic mix of African, Indian, Middle Eastern, European, Chinese, and First Peoples. Our cultural diversity has spawned delectable cuisine beyond imagination, a unique and dynamic genre of music like calypso, soca, and chutney. We are the home of the steel band, the only musical instrument developed in our time by descendants of former slaves. We are known globally for having the best carnival in the world. In fact, harmony and order in religious and cultural diversity can easily become part of our international foreign policy and agenda. We must recognize the positives of cultural diversity in our present COVID-19 crisis. This pandemic demonstrates that diversity is not the enemy. This common foe distinguishes no one and will only be conquered by universal collaborative research and dialogue. Every day, some sick person on a ventilator in the ICU ward in the throes of the ravaging COVID-19 infection is treated successfully. And that collaborative treatment and recovery are effected and celebrated by doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals of various nationalities, religions, and cultures. This must tell us something, that cultural diversity has an unimaginable strength if we give it a chance to prosper. It can make for a better, more humane, and compassionate, caring world. This pandemic may well be a catalyst for promoting a culture of sustainable peace, recognizing the oneness of our humanity. There exists an inextricable link to the empowerment of women who are culturally diverse through peace dialogue and social transformation in any given society. Women constantly live the philosophy that the home is the bedrock of society. There are commonalities of objectives and a greater sense of purpose among women folk from diverse cultural backgrounds that if supported in real terms can nurture better men and women and foster more progressive, more humane and more compassionate societies that we wish for and aspire towards. According to the UNFPA, and I quote, a woman still has a one in three chance of experience physical or sexual violence in her lifetime. In 2019, it is estimated that one in five girls are child brides. Today, less than a quarter of parliamentarians around the world are women. And the percentage of Fortune 500 CEOs who are women has grown from 0% in 1995 to just 5% last year, end quote. Women can be the dynamos of change if given genuine access to opportunities. On Sunday, the world celebrates Eid al Fitur, the culmination of the holy month of Ramadan, a period of fasting, genuine sacrifice, prayer, and selfless devotion. We must draw guidance, sustenance, and hope from the teachings of Islam and Almighty Allah the Beneficent. 
the five pillars of Islam can be lightning rods in our daily lives. Cultural diversity makes goal number 13 of the UN SDGs climate action achievable as the tenants of many cultures traditionally protect Mother Earth and discourage the callous exploitation of the environment and our biodiversity. This is about ensuring that we honor our intra and intergenerational responsibility and equity. The cultural divide has often been manipulated in a manner to build on perceived collective insecurities, resulting in untold mayhem to vulnerable citizens of the world, especially women and children. For example, in the former Yugoslavia, Rwanda, Syria, Iraq, and Libya, I have been, I have conf I have been confronted with man's inhumanity to man as an international jurist and a senior appeals counsel at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, where war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide were committed with horrific impunity on the altar of that cultural divide. Cultural diversity does not result in cultural capitulation or cultural erasure. Throughout the world, cultures have maintained their potency and resilience, even with decades of commingling. A core philosophy of cultural diversity must therefore be tolerance. I feel in the circumstances. Finally, if there is to be a real human and peaceful development, that cultural diversity, mediation, and alternative dispute resolution techniques must be a mandatory component in the curricula of all places of learning so that history will not continue to repeat itself. My dear ladies and gentlemen, the solutions that we seek are to be found in the classrooms of the world. We thank you. Thank you. First off, I want to say thank you very much to His Excellency, the former President of Trinidad and Tobago for his powerful words and the former First Lady for her wonderful words and enlightenment for me. Um, next person I want to introduce is um, Dr. Wedlow, President of AWC. The Association of World Citizens has been actively participating in the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization-led International Decade for the Reproachment of Cultures from 2013 to 2022. The Association of World Citizens stresses the need to promote human dignity and solidarity among cultures so that there is cooperation rather than mistrust, harmony rather than violence. Achieving a true reproachment of cultures must be sustained by what I call world citizen values, cooperation, respect, and living in harmony with nature. World citizens have an opportunity to present a positive vision of the emerging world society based on these values. As citizens of the world, we need to build bridges of understanding over the current divides of nationalism, ethnicity, and social classes. We are dedicated to the proposition that the unity of humanity can be achieved through free and complete access to the knowledge of all cultures. We celebrate our similarities rather than our differences. Thus, we join with you in calling for new levels of creativity for mutual understanding. Renee Wadlow, President of the Association of World Citizens. Hello. So it's an honor to be with you today, Hello, nice. celebrating the UN World Day of Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development with my talented and esteemed colleagues from across the globe. I'm Liana Valente, and I serve as the National Federation of Music Clubs representative to the UN Department of Global Communications. Our Music Federation is committed to building international relationships with music and supporting the creation of American music in all its forms. This short music video is a gift to the people of the world in this time of global crisis. It's entitled Crossing, and let me read the text for you because I neglected to put the text in the video. Let autumn's brilliant splendor cover me with glorious color, for winter's call is clear and bright. 
and let there be no tears at the dividing line as I walk into the forest deep twilight silence brings comfort then from the light it becomes dark without any sad farewells crossing the dividing line leaving time and place into the long journey I hope to see face to face he who made me after crossing the dividing line we hope the song brings you peace and solace to you and your loved ones Now gives me great pleasure to introduce the next guest, Professor Rejo E. Honahan, author of General Theology from the University of Gyeongsu, Helsinki. poem we ask how to understand and integrate those who we often assess as a less gifted but good-minded people how to help them to find their position in a world of hard competition using the metaphor of the spruce of independency this would mean that we realize that also those branches growing on the northern shadow side of the tree are living parts of the trunk. They belong to our social multidimensional community and are vital part of our human society. We are necessary for them but also they are important for us because they help us to find humanity in ourselves. 
through philosophy of Snellman, through Kalevala of Lundrup and Powings of Runeberg, the important social ethical pillars of the Finnish culture were created. This enabled the growth of the self-confidence and national identity needed for the political declaration of independence on the 6th December 1970. Hi, I'm the founder of Eno School Network for Sustainable Development. In 15 years, we have planted over 30 million trees around the world to struggle against the climate change, for biodiversity and many other reasons. 135 students and 100 teachers from nearly 70 countries arrived at Helsinki Vantaa Airport. The Secretariat announced the Climate Action Plan 2019-2025, to which focuses on planting trees, recycling, education and establishing a worldwide student network. The Slovenian student announced the climate agreement of schools aiming to plant trees and absorb 3 million tons of CO2 by 2025. Thank you, Professor. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the five do's, do's and the three don'ts puppet show. Enjoy. The world has become such a dangerous place. Everyone's super anxious. I really want to go out and see if there's anything I can do to help instead of staying home all day. Mmm, I think that is the wrong mindset to have. For now, staying home is a way to help too. Have you heard of the saying, quarantine, no human rights, no quarantine, no human left? This should be taken seriously. According to recent statistics, there is a high number of people who are asymptomatic. Because of this, the disease has spread widely. If everyone stays home until chance of transmission ended, we will all be safe. Ah, I see. Thanks for the reminder. In that case, we need to keep our distance too. Let's stay at least six feet apart. Yep, other than that, there are also the five do's and three don'ts that we can follow. Yep, the three don'ts are don't be angry, don't be anxious, and don't be nervous. Not being angry allows our body and mind to be in balance. We need to be prepared all around so we are not anxious. We should stay up to date with all the correct information so we are not nervous. That's right, and the five do's are wash your hands frequently, to stop the transmission of pathogens, Drink more warm water to remove toxins from our body. Exercise more to boost our metabolism. Be happy to keep your immune system in good condition. Lastly, be more careful. Pay attention to disease transmission and preventive measures. Even though we can't go out, we can call or text our family and friends to see how they're doing and share these tips with them so they can protect themselves and be calm. There are actually many different ways to help. You don't necessarily need to go out to help others. Some people have described this pandemic as the Third World War. I find it to be more like a war against ourselves. If we can listen to the calling of our conscience and not be selfish, we can overcome this obstacle and it will be a victory for all. That is very wise. I also believe that conscience is the antidote for the world. As long as we abide by our conscience, we can rebuild safe and healthy communities. We got this! Here we go! First off, I just want to say thank you very much to the five do's and three don'ts of the puppet show. I grew up watching puppets. Jim Henson when I was a kid, Fraggle Rock, Sesame Street, Muppet Show. Um, so I want to introduce the next person, who's Russian, Mr. Anatoly Kazak. 
Um, I've very much been looking forward to this all day long on this special day. Thank you. Здравствуйте, мои дорогие друзья. Вас приветствует и поздравляет проект Балай Корнурут. Сегодня на берегу прекрасной сибирской реки Енисей на хуторе под названием как называется у нас хутор? Красный хутор. Красный хутор. А именно на Красном хуторе здесь мы вчера вечерки проводили, танцевали, хороводы водили. И вот сегодня решили именно для вас поздравить вас, передать вами привет с, 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 Енисей, от Енисея батюшки и для вас музыкальный такой маленький подарок. sent a special uh, video introduction uh, and I suppose that it would be switched on but I'm happy to tell you that this very young inspired spiritual man musician from Russia he was born in Chita city very very far uh, from Siberia and he followed his dream he fell in love with Balalaika and uh, after graduating from the musical college in Chita, he first traveled all over the world with one of the Russian musical ensembles, but then he created his own project, Balalaika to People. And this, that was a great opportunity for him to share his love to Balalaika with you. And you know that Balalaika expresses the wonder of the soul. So this is what I was going to add. I'm very happy to be with all of you and to present Russia here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nina. And um, I also want to thank Mr. Anatoly for his beautiful music. As you know, I'm, I'm Russian and I love the ballet Laika because it stirs my soul and the folkness and the folk arts of Russia is something I'm very intrigued in as in folk art and around the world as well, but especially in Russia. So thank you so much to the, um, Anatoly and you, Nina, for explaining. I will pass to him, and I, I think that he watches now this video, this online happy event from Chita, because he knows about it. I'm so happy to meet you, that you are also from Russia. So it was such a happy event. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much, and have a wonderful day. Um, the next person I would like to introduce is Mrs. Amina Lilo Wewo. When my cousin Camilla married Prince Charles, um, the only Arabic king in the chapel was the king of Bahrain, and what a nice chap he was. I, I have happy memories, and also his cousin, who was is Sheikha Haya Al Khalifa, I actually gave her a medal once in the United Nations. She was, in fact, the president of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And I have the great privilege that uh, it's a mere envoy to actually decorate her. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mrs. Amina Lilo Wewo. Good evening, everybody. And I'm very happy to be part of this wonderful and amazing uh, event today. This is like the beginning of cultural uh, diversity for dialogue and development. Our being together, this is already like something what we are doing together. I want to thank our, uh, His Excellency Dr. Hong 
because he said all starts from us and it's really it starts from us i'm from finland and i uh, moved to i'm a world traveler and i came to bahrain in 2000 maybe seven and i stayed there for four hours somehow i loved bahrain during these four hours and i wanted to come back to bahrain so i came back 2009 for one month and you see this one month uh, is now already 11 years i feel love with this country and i thought that i knew the world because i was traveling all around the world i know the people but and in finland where we have all like granted an easy life and when i came to bahrain and i saw all these people who are living in bahrain because bahrain is uh, like like united nations all the people there they they uh, uh there are all the nationalities you just name what nationality uh, everybody is there and all live in harmony all living in like they are caring about each other and and this is something amazing what shocked me a lot <laughs> pleasantly positively and and really and i established my own company i do events and when i did events in finland about bahrain i noticed that people don't understand uh, uh, uh for example the status of bahraini women they thought that bahraini women have no rights and so on you see here we come that we have to know more about each other and if we know more each other we start to understand each other and when we understand each other we uh, start to value each other and, and we start to inspire motivate and help each other and uh, with knowing uh, the traditions cultures uh, religions we start to the, the world will change into a much better place i want to thank also uh, his highness uh, uh, anthony Carmona uh, and his wonderful wife for this wonderful speech because I agree every word what they were saying. I was before a Christian, but in Bahrain I uh, embraced Islam. And I tell you, this is a richness to know uh, re uh, religions and to be part of it. So I'm really, very happy to be with you here and welcome to Bahrain. I try to connect the world as, as, as much as I can, as, as good as I can. So welcome to Bahrain and let's make this world much better place. Thank you so much. Dokren uh, Habibi, uh, Masalama. So far, we're, we're only partially through our journey of culture, but we've been to Russia, we've been to Bahrain, we've been to England, we've been to, we've been around the world, to the Caribbean. So I wanted to reinforce how much of a buffet of uh, culture that we've experienced so far in, on our journey. And now we have a dear friend from Mexico that has a video to share, Mr. Martin Olaverta. Yo creo que toda educación tiene que partir de la identidad nacional. Es el compromiso de educar a nuestros niños en el amor a sus tradiciones, a sus costumbres. En el amor y en el conocimiento de lo que somos. Y sobre todo educar a mexicanos orgullosos de su esencia natural. La tradición de la ofrenda para nosotros es, es arraigarnos a toda nuestra cultura, arraigarnos a nuestros antepasados. Este amor que me nace de mi cultura y de mi país viene de la escuela que nos mete la danza como materia. La identidad nacional es, es nuestro pasaporte al exterior. El mundo nos ama, pero nos falta que nosotros nos sabemos a nosotros mismos. Te invito a que formes parte de un México extraordinario. ¡México extraordinario! I did get a moment ahead of myself, and because we ha do have Martin here as well, and we're going to ask him to share a little bit about the 
Mexican culture and the folklore dances that we just witnessed. He is from the president of the Function Cultural Bar. Good morning. It is a pleasure and an honor for the Board Cultural Foundations to be able to know each other, recognize ourselves, and therefore respect us all. In this time of conscience and consolations, and through this cyberspace of cultural connection that tend to contribute to well-being of all of us. I thank our friends, Dr. Han, for his kind invitation to participate in this virtual event. I will present this intervention in three brief points. First, the whole system is based essentially on living knowledge through art and culture. We applaud the teachers and the students for their efforts and enthusiasm collectively shared. Secondly, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, is established in the first article that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with their reasons and consciences to show act towards one other in a spirit of brotherhood. And third, it is to pay a tribute to all the doctors, nurses, and workers in the health sector for their admirable dedication, as well to honor those who die in the pandemic. Thank you very much, and stay safe. Uh, gracias, senor. Uh, this was a most splendid um, discussion and talk, and I'd like to thank you very much uh, for speaking for your beautiful country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, digesting the beautiful colors and the dancing and traditional folk dances of Mexico has just inspired my imagination. South America with those colors is a place I always wanted to go and experience myself. And it's been wonderful to sit here and to experience all these different cultures and to share these ideas with everyone and how everyone's ideas been shared open and freely. So I want to thank you, Mexico, very much. And next on the um, program is um, my honor to introduce Dr. Bimberg and Mr. and, and Mr. Um, Bernard Winsky. Hi, my name is Randall Bernberg, and I'm from Chicago, um, but I have Italian, Croatian, Romanian, and Ukrainian roots inside me. My relatives are from there. And uh, I eventually uh, went to school, uh, went to school in Rome, and basically moved to Germany in 1999. I'm currently a positive psychologist trying to make the world a better place. What about you, Brad? But just to keep it short, I'm a global citizen. And my aim is to help people to take responsibility for themselves, their families, their neighbors, and the society at large. Great. Would you like to see a presentation? Please go on. Let's do it. Uh, hello. Today I'd like to talk about from lockdown to accepting cultural differences. You know, we're in a very interesting place at the moment, and uh, the world basically has a big, big chance to take a look at themselves and uh, to start to see what's not working for them. In this presentation, I'd like to talk about as we stay home, we can start to take a look at how we see other cultures and eventually accept those cultures. And um, I have something here that, that I'd like to talk about, uh, a little quote from a woman, and I think it kind of says it all. It's not our differences that divide us, but it's our inability to recognize and accept and celebrate those differences. Now, as a positive psychologist, we think when we talk about differences, um, there's something in positive psychology or basically in science that's called epigenetics. Randall, how do epigenetics shape our views of other cultures? Well, it's an interesting you asked that, Bernd, because it's, it has a very, very big influence on how we see other cultures. You see, from about the third trimester in our parents and our mother until about the age of eight, we're basically in download mode. Uh, we're taking in all these things from around us and we're forming our views of the world. Uh, we watch how our mom or our dad says something about another culture. 
We watch how our neighbors might say something about another culture. We watch how the schools, our teachers, how the priests, how, how everyone in our environment uh, says things about a culture, and we basically take it down, and we start to form a belief system that that must be true, uh, that growing up in a certain area, having a different culture around you, that that culture might be dangerous. We took it in, and we started to believe that. And, and as an adult, we, this sits in our subconscious mind. After the age of 35, 95% of the things we actually think are subconscious. So we're, not, we're on autopilot very often. And as you can see here, um, many, many influences here. We've got uh, the community, how the community thinks about different cultures, religion, I talked about the priests, what the, what the government actually says about those different cultures. We take it all in. And at the end, we start to believe those things are true. And during lockdown, as, as adults now, how do we get around this? Well, there are things we can actually do during this lockdown. And I'd like to divide them into four, four things we can do uh, to gain some kind of cultural acceptance. The first thing is to be mindful, okay? And, you know, it, and it doesn't mean sitting in the court or meditating. It just means to be mindful of our thoughts. What are we actually thinking? And are those thoughts serving us? Are those thoughts about what we think as the world unfolds here, are those thought, thoughts serving us for the good? After we become mindful, we start to imagine, do we love ourselves? Because at the end of the day, Ben, it's all about self-love. Very often we start to blame and we start to look at other cultures And, and start to envy them or talk badly about them because we lack a self-love. Uh, the next thing we can actually do is make sure that what we're, what we're doing in the world has purpose. You know, I believe that everyone has a purpose on this planet. And when we find our purpose from being mindful, when, from loving ourselves, and then actually finding our purpose, we begin to be able to socially connect a lot better, you know, with other people. And, uh, and social connectivity is the number one element for sustainable uh, subjective well-being or happiness. So that's about it. That's how I would, I would, I would actually tell people to, what to do during lockdown. Okay. Thanks, Randall, for this explanation. Stay happy. Thank you. And you're welcome and peace and love and smile. So Randall's given us a really good psychological perspective on managing the lockdown and experience and expanding our mind with culture. And I know that uh, Randall is here with us today. I think that he, Dr. Randall's with us here today, and I suspect that he's normally used to giving a prelude, but, uh, but uh, we'll have him do a wrap-up synopsis Or, or his comments on the day. So, Randall? Hello. Uh, thank you again. I'm in such great company here. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's beautiful to watch everybody on the screen and watch this, all these cultural things before me. And um, I uh, really, I mean, if there's anything that people can take from what I just said, you know, those downloads that we take in, You know, I was raised on the south side of Chicago in the 60s and 70s. And believe me, there were, we, you know, there was a little thing going on there where I believed a certain things about certain color of people. We just took that in, you know, and uh, it just wasn't true. And uh, so what I would like to just conclude here is that we, when we sit back, and we practice mindful skills, uh, and we look at other cultures, is there anything that we could be thinking about that other culture that really came from our childhood or came from generations? Epigenetics is just not the, in those early years. Epigenetics are cultural things that have been passed down generation after generation, right? So it's just in us. The, the, I mean, what happened in America uh, hundreds of years ago is in the genes of people today. 
what happened in Italy, what happened in Germany hundreds of years ago, is in your genes. So you basically, we have to just sit back, think about other, other cultures, and think about our first feeling of it. Is it serving you? If it isn't, then you've got to reprogram. You know, I talk about downloads. You have to reprogram your downloads at that point. And thanks for having me. Thank you all for having me. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And it does remind me actually of His Excellency Anthony Cardona and what he was saying about tolerance and the interactions of tolerance of, of all of the cultures around the world have beauty to them. And they also have artifacts from different times. And I think that when we look at that, one of the things where we achieve peace and peace, inner peace and external peace is when we adopt a perspective of tolerance from that cultural perspective. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to the doctor. I really related to his messages. Um, funnily enough, I was born in Chicago um, and my family moved out when I was two months old. Um, but I still have family in Chicago, so I go all the time. Also, about mindfulness, peace and love and everything, um, it really resonated with me because I learned that when I did something in South Africa seven years ago, over seven years ago, I spent a few months out in South Africa having starting a new life, and, um, and I learned all that. So it's very, I'm very thankful for you reminding me on this day. Um, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our next guest, Mr. Um, Maverick. Hello, how are you? Um, I'm very glad to participate in this event, uh, event that celebrates diversity of the world cultures. And I want to present Croatian Club of Music as a Croatian citizen with address in New York City. Uh, Croatian Club of Music uh, it's mostly popular as Dalmatian clap of music. So Dalmatia is the southern region of Croatia at the coast. And it's a traditional singing uh, that is sang with uh, multiple voices. So there's a leading tenor, there's a, a followed by second tenor, baritone, and first and the second bass. So it's pretty complex singing. And um, I think that's one of the best cultural products of, of Croatia. Um, the the topics in the songs are about the um, about the life at the coast, about the the sea, about the islands, uh, about women, about love, about the wine, and so it, it it's about the Croatian life, I would say. Um, and not only uh, the Croatian local communities in southern regions of the Mesa, but also all Croatians. Uh, see the couple singing as a central marker of their musical identity, uh, incorporating respect for diversity and international dialogue. Uh, today, the clapper, even in the roads, for example, we have clapper story in New York, and you, go, you are going to hear two songs after this. And we have even a clapper some more. Uh, in Far Samoa, they're all Samoans, and they have Klapa Samoan. It's very interesting. And they sing in Croatian language. So I can let you hear now. Uh, I think the best way to understand Klapa music is to listen to, to what's coming. Thank you. Tam mi je, tam mi je, s tobom ti su ima. 
ti, da mi je, da mi je. S tobom i na umjeti. So now in our journey, we want to travel to, to Asia for a uh, conscience-themed pop song that is very lively and interesting. And again, we hosted the International Day of Conscience earlier on April 5th, and so this is a pop song that was inspired by that day. The inner compass can lead the way. Lead away. Conscience is knowing what's right from wrong. Conscience is our guide to a peaceful world. Happiness, yeah. the most important thing. Like the bell of peace, make your voices ring. Spread your happiness. Come on. Bring your friends along. We can get through this with the same goal. Listen to your conscience, love yourself. Love yourself. Listen to your conscience, love the world. Love the world. It's our only home, you're not alone. Not alone. It's our conscience, we can stand as one. Stand as one. Listen to your conscience, no anger. Just smile. Listen to your conscience, no worries. Let it go. Listen to your conscience, no tension. Just relax. Don't give up, we'll get through this. La 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 la. La 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 la. Listen to your conscience, love the world Hold on, don't give up We will get through this
So as everyone can see, there's a, this is a fun video. It encapsulates an important principle I mentioned earlier, which is the conscience that will bring cultures together and the beauty of tolerance through conscience. That these are important principles that have been trending throughout today's event. And I do want to invite everyone who is watching this program to visit our website at icday.org. There's a declaration that you that you can endorse regarding the International Day of Conscience. Next, our dear friend Nina from Russia had invited another friend to do a performance, and I wanted to give her the opportunity to introduce Christopher Klafhammer. I'm very happy to introduce a, a real miracle to all of you, my dear friends. Mm, one more miracle from Russia. It is an art gift. And you will now see a German man who consciously moved from Germany to Siberia and he lives in the abode of Dawn community for six years, uh, just experiencing a new way of life, totally new way of life, of love, peace, uh, friendship, relationships, uh, unity of heaven and earth. and. Um, they really create, they are all totally responsible for their own life, for Mother Earth, and I hope you will feel it when you will now meet an unusual ensemble. Uh, they are sitting right in the field, in the nature, and please feel the, um, the love and the vibrations and the call from Russia. Uh, I would love to invite all of you to come when the pandemia will be over, uh, to come to the Road of Dawn community and, and to experience uh, a seed of a new sort of human uh, love and peace civilization. So I invited Dr. Holm two years ago when I, we met in Moscow uh, to come with a bell of peace to Siberia uh, to really celebrate uh, the seed of a new civilization. So I'm very happy to be with all of you and um, enjoy this really unusual art gift. Thank you so much. Sun is rising, birds are singing. It's getting warm, it's getting finally warm, finally warm. Sun is rising. Getting finally warm, finally warm. Sun is rising, birds are singing. It's getting warm, it's getting finally warm, finally warm. Sun is rising, birds are singing. It's getting warm, it's getting finally warm, finally. This song I want to, to sing, or we want to sing uh, with you. Um, it is about uh, spring, about warmth which is uh, growing outside and uh, in our hearts. So, uh, my name is Christoph uh, Kapfhammer. I'm born in uh, Munich, in Bavaria, in uh, Germany, but I'm living here with my family in Russia. So, we uh, are now here in Siberia. Uh, in Russia, 6,000 kilometers in the east of Berlin. And uh, here are my friends helping me uh, to sing these songs with you. Here's An uh, Anja uh, Kapitova <laughs> and Anja Rax and uh, Tanya Gardeva. Hello. Uh, yes. So I love the beautiful la landscape, the very serene environment with the lake and the water and the full force of nature behind us and actually I'm really if there's a bright spot of this uh, pandemic we're going through is that we are also giving our chance to a uh, chance to nature to actually uh, recuperate a little bit from the tremendous stress that we've put the earth under in the last few years and um, 
I do know that uh, one of the big news stories that we had previously prior to entering the pandemic was the tremendous uh, fires in Australia. So today we have with us, not necessarily talking about that, but um, we have Mr. Abe Schwartz from Australia, and he's with the Grassroots Consultant for Interfaith Dialogue. Hello. Isn't this the most incredible, for me, early morning? It's 2 o'clock in the morning here down under. In fact, we've had a full day of the 21st of May. It's now 2 a.m. on the 22nd. And my pleasure to come to you all, having experienced the whole 21st of May with a spirit of interfaith dialogue because people that we've spoken to today are Buddhist, Christian, from the Islamic community who are celebrating the Ramadan in the strangest of circumstances where they can't connect with each other and many, many other cultural heritages. And in particular, I need to acknowledge the elders of our land, the Aboriginal elders, the first citizens, the first Australians. We acknowledge their custodianship, past, present elders and the future elders, the young ones. Coming up in a few days' time is the 27th of May, what we call Reconciliation Week. And there is so much work to do there. And now that we're locked down here in the COVID-19 dilemmas that we're all suffering equally around the world, is bringing us all together. And I invite us, like several have said, like you just said a moment ago, to embrace the technology because that is a way that we're well able to bring ourselves together and connect and take a negative. Sadly, some are sick. More sadly, some have died. Australia, we've been lucky. We actually reached only our 100th statistic of someone dying just today. But many, many have found this opportunity to connect with others and are using this opportunity to reach out more because the technology is allowing it. And what I'd like to share with you today is a poem that I wrote in honour of this special day of dialogue and development. We've got to look at the cultural diversity. It's a poem that has a, a rhythm that many of you will know. We just had a pop song and the, another very, very well-known pop band that was around a, a duo for so many years, an American couple of men called Simon and Garfunkel. And I'm sure many of you know their most famous song, Sounds of Silence. So with apologies to Simon and Garfunkel, I have adapted their words in the spirit of what today is all about. Can you still hear me okay there? Yes? Yes. And I'm, yes. Now, and I'm now going to please indulge me. The five verses of Sound of Silence is now hereby dedicated with apologies to uh, Simon and Garfunkel, to the, and I'm sure they would support it, to what today is all about, the World Day of Cultural Diversity, the Dialogue and Development, brought to us by Falpal, who of course I had the honour of ringing the bell in Melbourne in 2010 when, when the uh, organisation was out here, and in, in acknowledgement of that, I share these words. And you'll hear of my heritage and my Australian elders in this as well. Hello, planet. My, and if you know the words, sing along in your mind, but listen to these lyrics later on when you hear the music again, you can listen to these lyrics and compare it to the original. Hello, planet, my old friend. We've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds whilst we've been sleeping. But the vision that was planted in our brain still remains. It is the sound of conscience. For without dialogue, we'll walk alone, missing love and peace. No one to phone. But if cultural diversity shines from our lamp, we can bring it all from the cold and damp, and our eyes will be stunned like the flash of a neon light that splits the night, touched by the sound of conscience. So in the naked light we saw 10 million people, maybe more, people talking without speaking, people hearing without listening, people writing songs that voices can now share in dialogue we dare to promote the sound of conscience. Verse cultures I rather know 
human rights for all, helps this planet grow. So hear my words that I might teach you, take my arms that I might reach you, all the way from Australia, and we honour our Aboriginal elders with conscience. So throughout the world, people bowed and prayed to the neon gods they made, but my own heritage fleshed out its warning. Love your neighbour as yourself in the night and in the morning, for I'm Jewish, and the words of my prophets are written in our hearts and souls, giving us all some goals to celebrate our sounds of conscience. Friends around the world, please take the, the blessing from the elders of the Indigenous people, the oldest living people still on this planet, and please take my heritage, the Jewish heritage, which goes back thousands of years, work together, love each other, look after the planet, don't take more from what we need, leave this world in a sense of consciousness as we come out of COVID-19 so that we're not in the same old normal but a new normal. And please take the blessings of all that we've heard today and from here in Australia to you all, I send you our love. And please don't celebrate the sounds of silence but the sounds of conscience. Thank you. I love the uh, poem, the beautiful po poem, uh, Sounds of Conscience. It's very wonderfully composed. Thank you so much, Abe. No worries. Thank you. So for our next guest, we're going to travel to Bangladesh and introduce uh, Nays uh, Fahrana. And she is with the Dhaka Women Chamber of Commerce commerce and industry. Hi, I'm Nas Farhana, founder president of Dhaka Women Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I want to say happy IC Day in support of 21st May. UN World Day for Culture, Diversity, for Dialogue and Development. Thank you for Paul and Dr. Ha for arranging this virtual event for peace, love, friendship around the globe. Thus, I am reflecting my own culture, art, music during the COVID-19 pandemic based on conscience and my message of love and kindness through cultural exchange Universally, we are for peace, stability of this planet. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you. So our next friend that is joining us is actually from Nigeria. So we now travel in our mosaic to Nigeria. Our good friend and supporter of the International Day of Conscience, Mr. Smith Nwok Ocha. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, 
I feel so honored uh, to be um, in this uh, global gathering. So I want to join the rest of the world to celebrate International Day for culture, um, for diversity and dialogue and development. Um, so for Nigeria, we have a peculiar culture here. And I'm Igbo, so we have what we call the Ofen Sala. And that is like um, uh, the kind of soup we have. Can you hear me clearly? Okay, so. Yes, we can hear you. It's fine. Yeah. Awesome. So it, it's been an awesome moment. I enjoyed the whole moment. I want to, like I said, I want to add my voice and to do the rest of the world. So I'm here, and we are just um, conscious of uh, what we do here, and um, we promote peace. And uh, I'm so honored. I'm so honored. So thank you very much. Thank you for joining us and adding your conscience and adding your culture to the to the day of day of culture. So one of the one of the elements is so. I think as we travel around the world, we we visit all over the globe, and and have built a very good mosaic of culture that has touched every continent with, of course, the, uh, with, with the exception of Antarctica. We didn't have any penguins joining us, unfortunately. But um, I do feel like we have built up an excellent, excellent uh, mosaic of, of culture for everyone to enjoy. And I hope everyone has enjoyed this cultural feast that we've prepared. This is actually drawing to a close um, all of our presentations. So I do invite everyone to visit the International Day of Conscience, icday.org. You can find out more about our culture, about what we're doing, and we have some big festivities planned for this uh, for April 5th of next year. We also we also have we're in planning another cultural day for next year on May 21st. It should be very fantastic. We're, it, we'll announce more, so just keep, uh, add us to the Facebook group, the online media, so that you can find out more about what we're doing. We're also currently working on a program for the Environmental Day on Ju June 5th. So I want to invite everybody to join us for that, we are we have we're building a really good panel that I think will be very impressive, and that panel comes from again all around the world. Voices on protecting the environment, build, bolstering the environment. So these are very very good things. And I do want to uh, express my deep appreciation for everyone who has come together and joined us to build this mosaic of culture. And again, to reiterate, re 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 we do have June 5th, we have the, we're developing the in environmental day. That's our next event that we're, we're planning. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Have, be safe in the time of COVID-19 and please stay calm, stay happy. And uh, we will get through these times and come out stronger for it, much like Randall was discussing with his very good insights. So thank you very much. Yes, um, my distinguished colleague and friend, Mr. Selfridge mentioned um, he couldn't know better that there was no message from Antarctica. I beg to differ. I would like to announce that my dear friend, Mr. Doug Stout, who resides in California, he is one of the most famous Arctic and Antarctic explorers in the world and has been to Antarctica seven times and to the Arctic eight times. At my request, and he's used to my requests as Mr. Selfridge is, he sent the United Nations flag to the North Pole. It was planted there four years ago at my request. I now have pleasure to announce it will not be this year because of constraints of COVID-19 that I wish to plant in honor of Dr. Hong's magnificent work, flag and emblem of foul pile upon the top of the earth. Thank you. And uh, we also have His Excellency Prince Romanov. We've built a beautiful mosaic. I hope compromising and 
and co consistent with your beautiful artwork. I was looking at your artwork and the painting that you've done in behind, so. Thank you, thank you. It, it's been beautiful. I have to admit, it's been very inspirational for me. And also it's reaffirmed, I have a young son and I want him to grow up and see the world and be more cultured than I am. So thank you very much for everyone participating and giving me inspiration for the future. Thank you. I also want to express gratitude to our entire team. There's a lot of people that have submitted platforms and work that had we didn't have quite enough time to integrate into the program. We actually, I think if everybody looked, we, we had a scheduled a 90 minute program and we're, we're now a little over two hours in. And for everyone that's appreciated this mosaic we built, we had so much support that it really built up to something special. I know that uh, Philip's, uh, His Excellency Special Envoy Philip Bond, his uh, sister wanted to join with us and was not able to make it on. He also invited uh, some commentary from the mayor of, of, his, of his local town, hereditary town, I believe. Uh, maybe you can share a little bit about and express the, the thank, gratitude to them. And I also think there's also, tell us a little bit about the programs. Uh, Mr. James, I believe, was going to mention something, correct? Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Selfie, for that, for this excellent uh, epilogue. Yes, indeed. I am um, sad not to see my dear sister, Miss Camilla, who has done, if I may say, an immense amount of good work for Peru. She's an extremely modest person, um, and she is rather quietly adopted adopting some children. She says I shouldn't talk about it, but I, I think I can tell you a little. Um, and to move on swiftly, um, the mayor of God Manchester, who is a very distinguished gentleman indeed, Mr. Christopher Vane Percy, who has a wonderful house, which is called Island Hall, and he very kindly uh, allowed me yesterday, despite, I mean, we observed uh, social distancing naturally, but he invited me into the garden where we sat either end of a park bench and had a conversation. And um, he told me many interesting things, which I'm not sure if Prince Romanoff, I've had time to tell you. Um, he knew your great-grandmother. Um, was it Azania? Could you come on mic, Prince Romanoff? Yes, yes. Grand Duchess Azania. Could you tell us a little bit about your great-aunt? Yeah, your great -grandmother? Uh, my great-grandmother. Grand Duchess Xenia was one of um, the last emperor's Nicholas II's sisters, and um, she married um, Prince Sandro, Prince Alexander Romanov. His nickname was Prince Sandro, and he is the godfather to Russian aviation. Um, funnily enough, for my birthday, which is today, my mum gave me his World War One pocket watch that's made out of. Um, gun metal and so on and so forth so um which is very exciting and uh and they fled to the uk after during the revolution on hms marlborough um and lived in kensington palace and luton hall luton who i think yes, think. yes. Yeah. for a bit for a long time i'm not sure you knew but um, my great aunt's godparents were Grand Duke Michael and Countess Torbay, which I forget what relation they are to you. Ah, uh, I forget as well, but they are related to me, yes. Yeah. And um, I remember going to New York when I was 21, and I met two of your relatives who were, one was known as Nikita. Yes. Who had a younger brother called Alexander, who, who had the most amazingly blue eyes. Uh, my little brother Nikita. He's taller than me, and then my sister was out in New York at the time. Well, this uh, was I met I met your relative Nikita. I mean, I didn't address him as Nikita, but I understand he was no, no. called in 1986. Oh yes, Uncle Nikita. Yes, yes. And he, he, he him and his brother. I went to he, your relative. He was um, Prince Alexander Romanov. His 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 funeral actually in Kensington it was that wonderful Russian church in his animals gardens. Yes, and. Yes. I, I was there, in fact, with um, Her Royal Highness, uh, the Duchess of Kent, you know, and there were, there were a lot of people who are interested in the, the, the Romanov family. It was really an amazingly beautiful service. We, we stood, which 
as a Roman Catholic, I'm not used to standing for such a long time. But yes. um, I understand that's something you do quite a bit of. Yes, yes. It's, you stand for very long times in church, in the Russian Orthodox Church, with lots of incense. So it's very interesting and spiritual. So, yeah. Well, I'd just like to, if I may, um, thank you very much for joining me with as a co-curator, in fact, of this wonderful presentation, which, in fact, I must say, has been put together by the wonderful committee we have at Falpal. And I would particularly like to congratulate, well, first of all, Dr. Hong for having a great idea, which we are servants of. Secondly, I'd like to thank Mr. Selfridge, who, without him and Miss Fabian's help, you know, they have really sort of charmed me into making this happen. <laughs> And very charming they are, and very hardworking. And I do think that also you other very distinguished people who have joined us, including the former president of Tobago, you know, thank you so much for your help. I mean, all of this, especially in this climate of the COVID-19 pandemic, is really amazing. Thank you. Yes, I just want to echo his excellent um, Philip's words. Thank you, everyone, for that work and participating in today. Thank you. I think that, as we said, we've, we've set out to build a beautiful mosaic and together we couldn't do that with all the friends that we've met, yourselves included, His excellent, all of His Excellency of, of Tobago. These are uh, Trinidad and Tobago. These are the, the beautiful uh, mosaic that we've built. So I am very pleased with today's event and I hope that everybody's enjoyed it. We, there's so many people that are, are putting themselves at risk right now. And recently we promoted the Nurses' Day and gave respect to them. And we have a short video that we wanted to play. And then, I don't know, and then after that, I think uh, Mr. James is there, is, or is he or is he not? Ladies and gentlemen, it's often said in England that the best is saved till last. And I have a very distinguished gentleman with me who's very actually modest about his work, so he wouldn't really tell you about it. But he is responsible for the food in my county, in Cambridgeshire, for distributing very, very carefully. And I'd like to just, he's going to say a few words about food and how it's important in this current pandemic. Jones. Hello, everybody. Thank you for allowing me, just for this short time, to speak. And I've listened to some of the conversations earlier and have been very moved. Here in Cambridgeshire, we live in a multicultural society, endeavouring to work together, uh, coming from all sorts of background. And we join together at this time for during this epidemic to provide food, that enables everybody, no matter where they come from, what their beliefs are and what their standards are, that we provide for them a level of food that enables them to be able to eat as they would normally. I believe very much that one of the work of Food Bank in the UK and more than likely in every country around the world that we are hoping and endeavouring to make sure that nobody goes without and that everybody has an equal opportunity to access to food. Now I know that in the Western world we are very, very fortunate, but there are people during this epidemic who are really struggling from whatever country. And the UK is not immune to that. And our hope as a food bank in Cambridgeshire is that everybody who comes to our door will get a welcome, will get a hand, well, not a handshake, but a, a two meter a two meter hug saying that we want to help you we want you to know that we are here for you and we're here 
that you can or do not have to go without. And I have experienced over the last few weeks that the community around the world has risen to the challenge of facing this epidemic by looking after their neighbours and their friends and their family. And I think it is a mark of humanity that we can do this. And I hope that because of this epidemic, we may learn to care and to really love each other, neighbours and our friends. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And I think that that is a voice that needs to be echoed. The compassion, the the trials of this epidemic teach us, to remind us the importance of culture, the compassion that, that we as a societies have, and it's uniform to all cultures. And so this is a very important thing. And so I would like to now present the video in appreciation to the nurses, but in truth, it's to all of the first responders, all the people such as Mr. Jones, who are doing their best to provide a level of support to our communities. Muito obrigado pelo seu amor incondicional a todos os pacientes do mundo inteiro. Muito obrigado. Vă onorez, stimați asistenți medicali, pentru lucru și efortul care îl depuneți pentru noi, umanitatea, și vă urez sănătate, înțelepciune și multă dragă. Îți danke allen krankenschwestern und allen pflegenden, dass sie sich im notfall um uns kümmern. Siete spesso invisibili, ma quando abbiamo bisogno di voi, ci siete. Verpleegkundigen van over de hele wereld, hartelijk dank voor jullie inzet tijdens het bestrijden van het coronavirus. Jullie zijn echt top. Grazie a ฉันอยากจะขอบคุณทุกคนที่ทำงานกับฉันนะคุณเทลาสกาโบคาราขอบคุณทุกคนที่ทำงานกับฉันนะคุณเทลาสกาโบคาราขอบคุณทุกคน
and living peacefully and happily with all of our neighbors in these difficult times. So with that, we will go ahead and end the program. Again, thank you everyone for joining us.